Hello Outsiders, uh, my name's Sean Collins and welcome back to another program. Today's program is going to be a mailbag program, so um, I'm going to cover off some questions that I've been asked. And I'm going to try and do that in the 10 minutes of a lot of time that I have with you this evening. So I'm hoping to get through three key questions. I've been wanting to do a mailbag program for quite a while and this gives me an ideal opportunity to do that. Um, my particular main focus is going to be on one email that I've recently received from a gentleman, I shan't say his first part, but I should call him 3760 who uh, asked some very interesting questions regarding, um, I do apologise about this, but I'm absolutely thirsty. I've been travelling most of the day so far today. That's uh, DMing, as they say. Um, who asked a very interesting question about his group and some of the problems that his group's been um, experiencing. So they've been together for six years. Um, they clearly take it in turns, like a round robin sort of thing of DMing. And they have one particular guy who's very good DM. Um, clearly a very experienced DM um, who's very imaginative, has all the great qualities, but the one problem that he has got is that his games tend to implode. Um, and part of the problem he has is that he seems to be... Um, it's hard to use the words um, justifiably. Um, it's hard to use the words in the right way, but what I'm really trying to say is he seems to be, in some ways, picking on 3760 as a player. And as a group, he seems to be trying to make every encounter burn off nearly all their resources and he seems to think that without them being near death every single time it's not a challenge now for that dm listen buddy i hear you you know i really do i, I understand what you're going through um this is this comes back to some of the fundamental things i've always said now for as part of an answer to this it should be fairly simple i'm going to say to you first of all as a group go back to the core books you you seem to be in your email using a lot of books outside of those. And you probably experience a lot of problems, a lot of power creep that comes in with those. They're not as heavily playtested, which is one of the biggest problems. Hours and hours and hours go into the core book. The core books are the Player's Handbook, DMG, and the Monster Manual. Now, in Pathfinder's case, you're going to find that's going to be their core book, their Monster Manual, Beastery, and their new uh, book that they're bringing out, uh, the Advanced GMing Guide. And there's also some more stuff coming out. I can't really talk about that at the moment. I will be reviewing it. But as soon as I've had a look at it, I'll tell you more. Anyway, cut long story short, um, I'd go back to basics. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, he's, in your letter he says that he's taking some time out to find the fun again in the game. Well, let me tell you something. He's missed the whole point here. The fun is those people that sit around those tables. That's people like yourself, 3760. You are the fun part of the game. Um, it might be a good thing he's taking time out. If he's a player that's been with you six years and you don't want to lose him, I can understand that, but you guys need to continue gaming on, um, and you need to make it clear to him that um, you know you want to carry on gaming, and some, so and so is going to run it for a while. If he wants to join in, he's more than welcome. If he wants a bit more time out, by all means do. The door's always open. I never close the door on a player; they'll do that for themselves in due course. Um, so that, that's the first thing. Um, in response to your letter, you're not to blame, so don't hold any um, don't hold any feelings against yourself. Not your fault. The referee has got on a trip where he doesn't see the challenge in the game and he's up in the power creep all the time to challenge you guys. Pretty clear, he doesn't know anything about his spells, he hasn't researched them, he hasn't thought of unique or ingenious ways to use them against the group or even to try and challenge the players in a fun way. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in other videos that I'm going to do. So I'm actually going to talk about, particularly around Pathfinder, around some of the tips and tricks a DM can use, or a player, that can use to have fun with spell combinations and various things that you can do. And that's why one of the reasons why I'm looking at the wizards first, it was asked if I would, and secondly, it just makes sense. So in essence, and recap your particular question, um, continue gaming on, try to get someone else to run who wants to run at the moment, ask the other guy to come and play. If he won't, if he still needs time away, fine. Always keep the door open for him. Uh, but in the short term, I wouldn't allow him to referee at this point because you guys um, it clearly... It's not something you're enjoying, so it's as simple as that. He's obviously a friend, and I understand the dilemma. But as I've said many times before in other videos, don't let don't let some don't let the friendship in the kindest way get in, ruin the gaming of several people. Yeah, and that's more important than anything else. Apologies about the phone going off in the background. Anyway, to uh, move on to the second part of my uh, questions, um, I would uh, I would like to uh, go on to the next part, which is somebody asked me about uh, Pathfinder in regards to movement. So I'm going to have to go to the Pathfinder Bible. Please do, page 215, guys, if you've got your Bible handy or can drag it, drag it out. And I'll quickly explain what we're looking at here. We're looking at spell areas. Um, somebody asked, are these spell areas correct on 215? Yes, they are. One of the specific questions asked was around cones. 
15 foot cones and 30 foot cones. Why does the 15 foot cone have a one starting square? Hopefully you can see it. And why does the 30 have a two? Well, the answer is that that is mathematically the way that they would work. You'll notice that, that most spellcasters, it's very difficult to move to the front of the groove safely to get off cones. It is more likely you'll get them off in this fashion here because you can be near the front and angle them away. So just generally, it's pretty simple. The 30 foot lines are correct. So there are several ways to actually use a, a line effects within the spell cast. And so all of this is correct. So um, in essence, that's, that's as simple as it is. The other part to his question was about diagonal movement. Um, how does that work in terms of moving a character? Now, it's pretty simple actually. You already told me the answer, which was the first move you make is five foot. The second move you make, it, so the first five foot diagonal move you make is five foot square, counts normal. The second diagonal move you make, or the next square you move into diagonally, counts as two movements or ten feet. The third diagonal movement then goes back to five foot. The fourth diagonal movement is another ten feet. So it is a one-two, one-two movement until you run out of movement. Now, if you don't like that, this is one area in the game as a DM, you can obviously change. It's not a problem. If you want to keep them every move, whether it be diagonal or horizontal, five foot moves, that's your prerogative as a DM. I haven't tried it out myself. Um, personally speaking, it's no hassle, actually, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, moving diagonally. I don't, I don't see it as a big deal. It hasn't been a big problem for players to pick up a play, irrespective of their ability or level ability. It might be the way I explain it. Um, so I've had no issues with it. But I can see a dilemma. Maybe it's worth experimenting and, and keep it simple, have it all one movement. I'd be interested to have your feedback, so let us know. My third and final question uh, that I'm going to answer has come from several sources was about... Um, why do I stick to the core books? I've already touched on it briefly there. It stops power creep. That's the number one. Um, the core books are the most heavily play tested, particularly when you look at things like Pathfinder, when you look at things like 3.5 D&D. Now, if you think about Pathfinder, they released a beta version. They had 50,000 players playing that. Um, so that gives you some idea of the level of play. And you will notice, if you look at your beta characters and look at what got in the core book, you'll notice that there was an awful lot of changes because they found some problems with those, those beta classes, some of them was power gaming, so they changed them. Now, as you know, hopefully by this stage, if you've been watching my programs as a DM, I have no issues with whatever the players do. I don't ban anything. I ban no core classes, I ban no spells, but remember, whatever the players can do as a DM, you can do as well. So that's the real challenge, is coming up with things that are going to challenge the players, move their perception, and get them thinking. And in answer to another further question, there isn't anything in this game that, in my view, that isn't logical for a medieval or feudal society. Because the thing is, if you think about spells, as you start looking at them logically, even if you think about creating food and water, you have to be fifth level. The odds of a fifth level uh, cleric, um, you know, supporting an entire town, you need that hundreds of fifth level clerics to make a town survive if it was an immediate drought or was short of food. That's why caravan still exists. So you need to apply your logic to the problems and think about why things happen. And that will actually help you, funny enough, in designing your game better. Anyway, this has been Sean Connors. This is Outsiders. Till the next time, happy gaming. Look after yourself. Take care.